Friction has been a sticking point for man for thousands of years. Hmm. Ancient Egyptians, struggling to slide their building blocks across sand, realized water created a smoother, slipperier surface. Although too much was not advisable. It's thought the builders of Stonehenge rolled their giant slabs across a series of logs. Which was the perfect solution, <laughs> as long as the ground was flat. Look out! But luckily for engineers at Mio, a scientific mishap made in a US laboratory during the 1930s would provide a solution. Engineer Rhys Morgan is getting to grips with this accidental discovery that revolutionized the way we live. Most people will recognize these day-to-day -day objects, but what most people don't know is that all of these harness the same properties of a revolutionary product called PTFE, or to give it its full name, polytetrafluoroethylene. This groundbreaking product was mistakenly created by an American chemist, Roy Plunkett. In 1938, whilst developing non-toxic refrigerants, an experiment with a gas, tetrafluoroethylene, went awry. It unexpectedly solidified, coating the inside of the test tube with a waxy resin. Inadvertently, Plunkett had created what would become the world-renowned trademark, Teflon. It has lots of different properties. It's very corrosion resistant. It's chemically inert. It doesn't react with other materials. And it has a very high melting temperature. But above all of these, it's very, very slippery. And being slippery means it's very adept at overcoming the forces of friction a phenomenon that is hard to deal with for a standard metal. So here I have a sled connected to a metal tray underneath and about 45 kilos of bricks and sand. And as I pull the sled along, the tray is going to have a huge amount of friction against the metal sheet here. And that friction is retarding the motion. As I start to pull against this now, you can see I've got five kilograms and I've still got no movement. So that's the friction preventing my sled from moving. I'm up to seven kilograms, 10 kilograms, 11, 12, and there it goes. Ah. So that's about 120 newtons of force to pull those along. To see how PTFE performs, the metal tray is prepared, then sprayed with the slippery coating, and cured at 430 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow, look at that. That looks incredibly smooth. So let's give it a go. I've got two kilograms, five, six, Seven, and look, it's starting to move already. Seven kilograms here to overcome the friction. And you compare that to 12 kilograms, that's 120 newtons. So that's about 50 newtons difference to move the same amount of weight. PTFE is made solely of carbon and fluorine atoms. Fluorine has the highest electronegativity of any element, repelling all other atoms. The fluorine wraps around the carbon, so it's unable to react to anything. As a substance, it is therefore highly unreactive and creates almost zero friction. The sledge can carry up to 40% more weight when pulled across the PTFE-coated sheet, the equivalent of a 5 foot 9 engineer. How much are we seeing? Wow. There you go, 12 kilograms, 120 newtons. How about that? Engineers at the Mio Viaduct took PTFE and incorporated it in a unique mechanism that would conquer the launching problem once and for all. 
it was necessary to create a system which, where the launching force was created peer by peer in such a way that no force, no bending was produced in the piers. To do this, the team created a translator, a machine that uses the slipperiness of PTFE and hydraulic jacks to lift the deck off each pier entirely before moving it forward. At this point, we have one of the uh, equipment which has been used to launch the bridge. On each support, we had four of these machines. Each translator uses two wedge-shaped blocks coated in PTFE. A hydraulic ram pulls the upper wedge, which slides it up the lower wedge. This lifts the deck away from the pier, pushing it forward at the same time. The lower wedge then slides backwards, lowering the deck back onto the pier. Each cycle moves the deck 600 millimetres. All the launching systems are moving in the same time, by the same distance, and so you can understand very clearly that it's not producing any force in the pier. But before engineers could begin the launch, there was another problem. The typical spans are 342 meters long, but it's much too long to be crossed directly. So it was necessary to install in each span a temporary support, a big truss, in order to divide the span by two. Seven temporary piers were built across the valley. And in February 2003, the launch began. But as the two and a half kilometer deck was pushed out into the void, the course was not straightforward. Here, from the north abutment, we can first see the curve of the bridge. The, the, the bridge is curved with a radius of 20 kilometers, which is very, very large. As the two colossal sections progressed their curved course from opposite sides of the valley, engineers had to rely on GPS technology to ensure pinpoint accuracy. And in May 2004, 15 months after they were first launched, the two sections of deck finally met above the Tarn River. And incredibly, they were only out by a few millimetres. This system was really the key of the success. 